we're going to add geolocation to a .NET project so we can find a client's country by doing an IP lookup. So we've created a GeoIP service which implements an iGeoIP service. We've forgot an IP address regex here, and this will help us validate the IP address to ensure that it's in the correct format. You'll be able to see that in the YouTube video description if you wish to use that regex. We've also got a get country method which is passing in an IP address as a parameter. At the moment it's returning null, but we're going to add to that. So this implements the iGeoIP service and it also returns a GeoIP country model. We're going to be adding details such as the IP address and then the lookup such as the country ISO code, the country name and the country names in different languages. We're going to create a new method to check whether the IP address that we're using is valid. It's going to return a type of boolean and we're going to call it its valid IP address and we'll pass in the IP address as the parameter. Now we're going to check whether it's null or has white space. If it does, we know it's not a valid IP address, so we're going to return false. Then we're going to do our regex check. So we call regex.isMatch. We pass in the IP address as the input, and as the pattern, we use our constant string of our regex pattern. If it's not a match, once again, we know it's not a valid IP address, so we return false. Otherwise, we're going to return true. We're now going to add it to the get country method. So we say if it's not a valid IP address and we're passing the IP address as the parameter, we return null. We're now ready to do an IP lookup to find the geolocation of the client. And we're going to use Geolite2 for MaxMind and add it to our .NET project. Geolite2 has three geolocation databases that are updated twice a week on a Tuesday and a Friday at time of recording. MaxMind also offers GeoIP2. The GeoIP2 databases are more accurate than GeoLite2, but incurs a monthly fee. You need to sign up for a free MaxMind account to use GeoLite2. When you're signing up, make sure that you enter a valid email address, as they'll send you an email to set your password, and also an email with a code, so you can log in. When you're ready to log in, you go to sign in. Your username is your email address. When you sign into your account, you'll be greeted with a page that's similar to this. Let's click on the Download Databases link, and the database that we're after is the GeoLite2 Country Database in MMDB format. Let's download it onto our machine. The zip file is in a tar.gset format. If you can't open it, you can download WinRAR and open it through that. We open the country, now we need to extract the MMDB file into our ASP.NET Core Web API. And that's what we're going to do. Created a new folder called database and we're going to extract it into there. Back in our ASP.NET Core app, we need to ensure that our databases are copied every time we do a build. To do that, we right click on the database, go to properties. For the build action, we set as content. And for the copy to output directory, we select copy always. We also need to add the maxmine.goip2 NuGet package to our project. So to do that, in Visual Studio, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We do a search for X, it's maxmine.goip2, and we'll add it to our project. Back in our GeoIP service, we're opening up the database, and we're getting the path to the database based on the executing location. We're getting the directory name for that, and we're appending the location for the MMDB format. Now, the GeoIP service is set up as a singleton, and the reason being is that it's quite expensive to keep opening up an instance of the database every time we want to do a lookup. To do our IP lookup, we want to create a new variable called country response. To get the response, we're going to wrap it around a try catch block and we call our instance of the country database reader, call the country method, passing in the IP address as the parameter. Now, if it can't find the country, it throws an address not found exception. We wish to return null if that's the case. We also want to make sure that the country is not nullable. So to do that, we call the country response, we call the country property, and we ensure that it's not null. If it is null, then we return null. Otherwise, we're going to return an instance of the GeoCountry IP model. For the IP address, we just pass in the IP address that we passed in as part of the method. To get the country ISO code, we get the country response dot country and we get the ISO code property. We do a similar thing for the name. So we're just going to pass in the name from the country instance of the property. 
And for the names, we just call the names property. We set up an API controller to test this, and we're passing in the instance of the GeoIP service through dependency injection, so we can use the methods. We set up a method for get current country. This uses the remote IP address of the request. Now this won't work locally if you're running it on your machine because it uses your local IP address. We've also set up a different method for get country. This passes in the IP address and this is the method we're going to be using to test it. We can try it out. So we're going to put in an IP address of 6.6.6. .6. We execute the endpoint and the response is returning that it's from the United States. So we've got the ISO code, the country name and the country names in many different languages. Using the remote IP address is fine if you're running your application on a standalone server. However, if you're using a reverse proxy like Cloudflare, this will only return the IP address of the proxy. To get around that, proxies will quite often add the IP address in a request header called xforwarded4. We can use the forwarded headers middleware to add that in. We also need to make sure that we're using it. We can test that out in Postman. So we're not passing in the IP address as part of the URI. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new request header. It's called x forwarded 4 and we're adding our IP address of 6.6.6.6 .6 and this returns the country based on that IP address. Cloudflare also adds the client's IP address to another header name. So we can use the forwarded headers to add that in. So we call options and the property we're after is forwarded for header name. And the request header that they pass it in is cf-connecting-ip. We can test that out again in Postman. So this time we're going to add a request header of cf-connecting-ip, put in the IP address of 6.6.6.6, .6 and it's returning the country information. Just an important security note to only add the forwarded headers middleware if you're using a reverse proxy. As we've just demonstrated, it would be easy for the client to forge the IP address and also forge the country as to where they're located. As well as a country database, MaxMind also offers a city database as part of GeoLite 2. Let's take a look at that. Back in our MaxMind account, we can find the GeoLite 2 city database in MMDB format and download the SIP for it. You need to extract it into your ASP.NET Core Web API project. Once you've extracted it to your ASP.NET Core Web API, you need to set the properties for it. So for the build action, you need to set as content. And for the copy to output directory, set that to copy always. We set up a separate city model. We've got a property of city and we've created a constructor, passing in the parameters for the country, the IP address, and also the city. We're calling the base constructor from the GeoIP country model, passing in the country information and the IP address, and then we're setting the city as part of this model. In the GeoIP service, we set up a separate database reader for the city and we're calling the city database. To do an IP lookup on the city, we want to make sure that we're passing in a valid IP address. So I'm going to create a new variable called city response. We do a try catch block. To get the city response, we call our instance of the city database reader, call the city method, passing in the IP address as the parameter. Now, if it can't find the city information, it throws an address not found exception. We want to catch that and return null if that is the case. Now, we want to do a couple of null reference checks. We want to see if the city is null from the response. We also want to check if the country is null as well. If they're both null, we're going to return null. Otherwise, we're going to create a new instance of the GeoCity IP model. So for the IP address, we just pass in the IP address as the parameter. To get the city response, we call city response.city.name. To get the country response information, we can copy and paste from the country method and make a couple of changes. So the country response, we change to city response. We're going to do no reference checks on each of these as well. So we do it on the city response and the country. We've created similar methods in our GeoIP controller to test this out. So we've got get current city and it's using the get city method from the GeoIP service, passing in the current remote IP address. We've also got one where we can pass in the IP address as part of the URL. We can test this out. So if we go to our method, we're gonna pass in an IP address of 15.15.15.15, giving us our information. And it's also given us the city name. Just to note that the city information doesn't seem to be that accurate. 
When we tested it with our IP address, it based us in a city that's 120 miles or 193 kilometers away from where we're actually located. In addition, the city database that we downloaded was nearly eight times as big as the country database. This tutorial also mentioned about adding middleware to ASP.NET Core. Watch this video next where you can learn how to add custom middleware to your ASP.NET Core app. And if you want to download the code example for this tutorial, you can go to roundthecode.com examples. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description.